In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Today it's our last day, our ninth day. Somebody said, it's not about how long you live, but how meaningful your life has been. What brings meaning to life is commitment. And some other people noticed that some people live as if they will never die. And they die miserably as if they never had a chance to live. What distinguishes them is commitment. We pray for commitment in our lives. And for those who lacked commitment, we pray that the grace of God may be upon them. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us go to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have with you in my thoughts and in my ways, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my heart, through my form, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask to send me every page all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, O Lord. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the preaching of St. Francis Xavier, won many peoples to yourself, grant that the hearts of the faithful may bend with the same zeal for the faith, and that holy change may everywhere rejoice in an abundance of offspring. Lord, give us the grace to broom out of our lives lack of commitment. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you the image of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Hosea. The Lord says this, Israel, come back to the Lord your God. Your iniquity was the cause of your downfall. Provide yourself with words and come back to the Lord. Say to him, take all iniquity away so that we may have happiness again and offer you our words of praise. Assyria cannot save us. We will not ride horses anymore. Or say, our God, to what our own hands have made. For you are the one whom orphans find compassion. The Lord says this. I will heal their disloyalty. I will love them with all my heart, for my anger has turned from them. I will fall like dew on Israel. He shall bloom like the lily and thrust out roots like the poplar. His shoots will spread far. He will have the beauty of the olive and the fragrance of Lebanon. They will come back to life, in, they will come back to live in my shade. They will grow corn that flourishes. They will cultivate vines as renowned as the vine of Helbun. What has Ephraim to do with idols anymore? What, it I, what is it? What it is I who hear his prayers and care for him? I am like a cypress over green. All your fruitfulness comes from me. Let the wise men understand these words. 
Let the intelligent men grasp their meaning. For the ways of the Lord are straight, and virtuous men walk in them, but sinners stumble. The word of the Lord. I am the Lord your God, listen to my warning. I am the Lord your God, listen to my warning. A voice I did not know said to me, I freed your shoulders from the burden. Your hands were freed from the load. You called in distress and I saved you. I am the Lord your God, listen to my warning. I answered, concealed in the storm clouds, at the waters of Meribah, I tested you. Listen, my people, to my warning. O Israel, if only you would heed. I am the Lord your God. Listen to my warning. Let there be no foreign God among you, no worship of an alien God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Listen to my warning. Oh, that my people would heed me, that Israel would walk in my ways. But Israel, I would feed with finest wheat and fill with honey from the rock. I am the Lord your God. Listen to my warning. The Gospel Acclamation. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Repent says the Lord, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came up to Jesus and put a question to him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, this is the first. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. The scribe said to him, well spoken, master. What you have said is true, that he is one and there is no other. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, this is far more important than any holocaust or sacrifice. Jesus, seeing how wisely he had spoken, said, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to question him anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Today it's our grand finale, the ninth day, closing up our nine days of seeking God's grace, scaling down our nine days of cleansing and pulling out nine things out of our lives. Sometimes when we were young, we used to wonder, the next morning in class, some of our fellow pupils would be quickly raising their hands, asking the teacher, what did you mean by that? And sometimes, and unfortunately, it will sound very new. Then somebody taught us to say, when the teacher teaches, go and sit down, go through what he had taught. It stays, it sticks. You'll be very confident to come into class the next morning you'll be babbling with confidence. 
and true to the wise person's words. The next morning we go into class, we are on top of things, knowing, having the grip of what the teacher taught us yesterday, and we could easily be seeking clarifications and who are graded as class one, group one pupils. Simply because we began to be committed to what was disseminated to us. Simply because we began to be com uh, committed and began to domesticate what has been disposed to us. On our ninth day, the question is, where, are we, where have we come from? How have we journeyed? Are you able to carry a audit? Are you able to make an inventory? Some people would still be saying, when are we going to have another novena? I missed some days. What made you miss just these nine days? I was busy with something else. What is it that kept you busy? Have you become stinkingly rich? Some would say no. How have you lost time? Some cannot even explain. Where have you been? What is it that prevented you from concentrating on these nine days? Time and again I've been tempted to think that sometimes people fail because they choose to fail. Some fail because they just get overpowered. But in an event that you fail because you've made a choice to fail, please get committed to your life. Check how the day unfolds. Plan for your day, plan for your week, plan for your month, plan for your year, and get committed to the values that you set up. Get committed to the goals that you outline. Some people would begin so well with well-articulated goals, but in the process, they falter. They lose the grip. Perhaps it's time for you to realize that you need to get committed from every moment, from every hour. Somebody said, the darkest moment, it's when it is about to dawn. Some people have missed the crown at the brink of an eye, at the verge of getting a crown. Why? Because they lose their enthusiasm. They lose the levels of commitment. One thing you should know, my dear brothers and sisters, people are becoming, and they are becoming better than you would expect. Times are changing, and very fast so. Don't listen to the people who are going to tell you, no, the world is coming to an end. That's not true. The same people are telling you the world is coming to an end. They are mounting mansions. Where are they basing that kind of erroneous, misplaced kind of hallucinations? People are becoming, and they are becoming better than before. I've forewarned parents who have turned out to be failures and they are telling the children all over, no, the world is coming to an end. You won't find anything. You won't find anything. But they are going ahead sending children to school. For what then? My dear children, today it's youth day. Don't be irresponsible. Don't be careless. Don't be desperate. Don't be vengeful. These are vices that are not meant to be in your life. I take a moment to give the love to the youths on Youth Day. I give love to the youths from the Copper Belt University, from the University of Zambia, from any other university around the country, the colleges, and other tertiary institutions. Don't get trapped into these confusions of acrimony, of this political malaise. Distance yourself from that. Continue building your foundation. Don't allow yourself to be used as an instrument of these confusions, these divisions. My dear child, my dear youth, 
mark my word, it's only commitment to the noble cause that will make you a better person, not to be used. And for any information, these people who use you, they access beautiful, excellent medical attention. For you, even the money to buy that book for the scheme, healthy scheme, it's difficult. Move away from that. They are able to have three full course meals and you are yet to build your foundation. Even if you have political intentions, the first thing is go to the university, go to the college and build your foundation out of commitment. I'm saying this with no inclinations whatsoever. Some of these people you see, their confusions dates back from their university's days, from their mining days, from their business days, and they come and vomit the confusion into you because they know that you cannot see from the back and you are used as an instrument of confusion, an instrument of division. The energies that you use for such things, when you tailor them to something that is worthwhile, you become a successful person. When you get committed with such kind of energy to your, to your curriculum, academic curriculum, you will discover that you will be very successful persons. Nelson Mandela, in the course of the nine days, I quoted him. Don't allow somebody's enemies to become your enemies. Move away from that. Get committed to your noble cause that will make you a better person tomorrow. I cannot preach to you more than this. But mark my words, it's only commitment to what you want to become that will pay you back. My dear child, who is being kept by somebody else, being fed by somebody else, rise up. Don't be fooled by somebody's riches. No, we went out. We got drunk. No, we had fun. What are you becoming the next day? Those energies, you can use them to get committed to renewable cause. Some of the people, the young ones who brag around, we got drunk yesterday, you look at their shoes, you feel sorry for them. You look at where they sleep, you feel sorry for them. Then you simply say, this person has a long way to go. I've been telling the youth time and again, which is a beautiful day today. Not you don't oversleep in somebody's house. You wake up yawning, thinking it is your own. Wake up! Reorganize yourself. Make yourself up. Get committed. Some of the youths today, they only hide in the successes of their parents. Do you know my dad? Do you know where I come from? Have you worked for it? Yes, they have worked for it, not you. We've seen things. People have fallen from grace. We've seen things. Children who have stood up. My dad, my dad, my dad. Within a twinkling of an eye, it goes to ground zero. Use those blessings to get committed, to make yourself, to make the name for yourself. Enough of Youth Day messages. Wishing you well and wishing you a brilliant and exciting day. It's from me you can get absolutely. Tomorrow must be better than today. With only one absolute route, get committed. Broom out lack of commitment from your life. And you believe me, fortune favors the devoted. Things will not come easily. You need to hustle. You need to work hard. Even our relationship with God, if you don't hustle, you don't recoil, you lose. Let's broom out lack of commitment from our lives. 
from the first reading from the book of Hosea, it's very clear. Return to the Lord. Give everything to the Lord. Be vigorous in searching for the Lord. The gospel, so plainly and elemental. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The mind is not left out. Get committed, think, check, re-energize, look, turn around, and search for a goal. When you fall, rise up, get committed, and conquer. Not how many times you fall, but how many times you are rising and conquering your goals. That matters most. There is another rule. Love one another as yourself. And Jesus is making it categorically clear. There is nothing besides this. There is nothing beyond these proportions. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Full stop. Everything else unfolds. Everything else follows suit. Everything else falls in place. Broom out. Lack of commitment. It's a question of vigorously loving the Lord. Some of the antidotes of commitment. From Exodus 32, 7 to 11, you are going to see. The Lord is saying, I'm not going to destroy this because Abraham is negotiating with God. Because you've labored, you've been committed to my cause, I'm not going to destroy this. You move further in the Gospel of Luke, you are going to see a man who had hundred sheep. He loses one. He leaves the 99 out of commitment to search for the lost one, and he finds it. I've been telling people, when you are living in the family, you have one bad seed in the family. That bad seed pollutes the family atmosphere. That child has to be tamed. I've seen fathers getting into their own houses. They see the child they don't like. Instead of watching TV, they go straight into the bedroom. The atmosphere is disturbed. You have 100 sheep, you lose one. Search for that one. You don't know what that one means for you. Be committed. And for us who've been eating groundnuts, you know, when you're eating groundnuts, you pull in one bad one, you are going to throw all of them. And for those who plant wheat, you know, when you plant a good seed of wheat here, ensure that the neighbors have also a good seed. Otherwise, if they have a bad seed, they will disease your good seed and you lose out. It calls for commitment. I've been telling parents in houses, when you are staying well in your house, make sure that the neighbors are equally well. There will be breeding thieves in the neighborhood. And don't think they only steal from their own house. They will come over to your house and steal from you. That's what lack of commitment. Those are some of the results of lack of commitment. Check what is happening in the neighborhood. If it has to be cleaned, let it be cleaned. Brothers, we are not in high spirits. What's happening to us? What's happening to our community? What's happening to our family members? It's not just about you. It's about us. It's not just about one person. It's about us. Don't say you are playing it safe from where you are. Get committed and make the next person safe. Help the other person to be safe. Then you are going to see that you live. Look at the woman in the Gospel of Luke again. She has ten drunchmas and she loses one. She lights up a lamp to look for the lost one. When she finds it, she throws a party and he spends more than the one she lost. What levels of commitment are these? This is what the Lord wants. 
This is what the Lord is yearning for. Even when you say, I don't care, the more you pronounce, I don't care, the more it hits you, the more you care from within, the more you lose peace from within. The simplest way is get committed and help the next person. The other thing we noticed, it's also from Luke 15. Bring the best robe, the car we've been fattening. Let's enjoy and celebrate. This guy was dead, but now he's alive. It calls only for commitment to move from ashes, to move from where you were to a better place. It calls only for commitment. And you get committed, it's not only you who's going to be blessed. Many other people get the blessings. What is expected from us as we get committed? Discover what the pains means to you. Discover what the injury means to you. Discover what the loss means to you. Don't pretend that you've never been hit. Don't pretend that you've never been injured. Understand the pain. Come to terms with reality. If you are to cry, cry. Shed tears. Nobody is going to stop you. But after your tears, dry up your tears and begin getting committed to the Lord. Discover what the pain means to you. Don't pretend you are not hurt. Number two. Acknowledge your sins. For how long are you going to say, they don't just like me? Who? How? Why? Acknowledge your sins. Organize yourself. Get committed. Get back to the drawing board. You are in a final finger fear. For me, these things are difficult. What about those who have passed? No, calculus is not for us. Calculus is for others. Who are those others? Acknowledge your shortcomings. Acknowledge your failures. I was jokingly discussing with the youths to say, if you are a slow learner, start more. It's a question of knowing yourself. I need to put in more hours. I'm a slow learner. Very simple. I need to inject in more hours for me to understand deeper. I'm a slow learner. I've inherited this slowness from my ancestors. It's no more. Acknowledge your shortcomings and let's get going. Let's get committed. Take a move. Mahatma Gandhi did say, it's only when you are doing something that you can become better. If you are not doing anything, nothing will change. About your situation, do something. About your deplorable situation, do something. Take a move. And another scholar said, you continue envying. Be envious of other people who are becoming, who are manifesting their talents. Why? Because you are not manifesting your talent. Take a move. Don't watch things fall. Don't watch blessings pass by. Take a move. Why are they blessed? I'm next in the line to be blessed. Why have they been saluted? I'm next in the line to be saluted. Take a move. Identify what you have lost. Some of the people, unfortunately, they have lost everything from birth because their ancestors never worked hard. I was telling them the super of truck is passing by, the parents of the neighbor buying bread and milk, but for us, it is just passing by. Why? Because we are lacking 11 kwacha to buy bread. 
I don't blame you. But it's now time to identify what you've lost. Are you going to lose it from this generation to another generation to another generation until the third generation you are just losing? Hey, let's get committed. There are some of the things that you've arrested. Some of the generations, they started from nowhere. They began arresting. They began arresting. Today, it's an admirable generation passing a baton of blessing from one person to the next person. That's why I refuse some of the irresponsible statements from people. This is the way we are. Our family is cursed. Our family is possessed. How? Can't one rise up and say, let's stop this case? Let's put a stop to this confusion? I've reminded you, you're coming from a God who is so nice, who is so good. Where have you grabbed the case? Where have you grabbed the possession? What comes from God is good. If you've been intoxicated along the way, get committed, wash it, clean it, come out of it and get moving. Very simple. Some extreme. We don't get married. This is the way we are. We don't know the case why it came from. From where? Can somebody put a stop to such a curse? Can somebody be committed to the Lord and say an end to this? An end to this confusion? And some of you responsible parents, put a stop to the case. Don't pass a case to the next child. Put a stop to the case. Be committed to concluding an era of failure. Finally, be part of the solution. You don't expect another person to solve all the problems for you if you don't agree to be part of the solution. Be committed and be part of the solution. This affects me. This affects my family. This affects my tomorrow. Let me be part of the solution. Let's rise up and pray. Let's rise up and be committed to prayer. The parable of the sower. One thing you should get from me. The seed is good. In each and every one of us. Some soil fell on the edge of the path. Some seed fell on the edge of the path. Some seed fell on the patches of the rock. Some seed fell among thorns. Some seed fell on rich soil. Are you saying the seed is bad? No! It's just where the seed was falling. Patches of, patches, edges among thorns, and it couldn't germinate. Not that the seed is bad. Some of you have gone into marriage thinking you are bad. You are not bad. Check your seed. It's beautiful. Sometimes it's because of the people you've met in your marriage. Some people have never prospered in terms of business. Not because you are bad, but sometimes it's because of the people you've met and how you've articulated your business arguments, defaulted it so. Some people say they are not lucky. Far from being true. Sometimes it's because of your lack of commitment. Dear brothers and sisters, the seed in each one of us is very good. It's a beautiful seed. Sometimes it depends on where it falls. But what is exciting about this news, about this parable, it's easier to work on the patches of the rock, on the edge of the road, among the stones, it's easier to work on it and make the soil fertile. 
than to have a lifeless seed. The seed in you, it's beautiful. Some people tell you you are ugly. You cannot do this. Tell them, give me time. Give me chance. Let me do what I can. Each and every one of us has the capacity to germinate. The seed in us from God is beautiful. Let's just get committed. We are heading towards a situation where Jesus is going to demonstrate his commitment. Watch the space. After these Lenten periods, we are going to see towards the end Jesus in Gethsemane, Jesus on the cross, Jesus in the grave, Jesus pulling through the grave. All these levels, it's because of commitment of Jesus. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. He pulls through the grave. I've been telling the people, I also stay in the grave only for three days. Why should I stay in the grave longer than Jesus? Doing what? <laughs> I've got to pull through the grave by the grace of God and follow Jesus. Why should I remain in the grave? Jesus, give me the grace to be committed to you so that I can easily pull through the grave. When Jesus rose, as we are going to see, he'll be singing to them, let's go. You'll be telling people, let's go to Galilee. Don't touch me. Let's meet in Galilee after his resurrection. You'll be emphasizing to them. Let's rise up. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Let's meet in Galilee. That's what commitment means. Those are the beautiful fruits of commitment. Our destiny must be exciting. Let's broom out lack of commitment from our lives. Today it's game down. Lack of commitment out of our lives. of our lives so that we may bloom, we may flower, wishing you a fruitful journey on earth. Shall we rise and present our petitions to God? For the whole Christian people, especially those who lack commitment, that in this sacred time, they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God. To the Lord we pray, Lord, hear us. For the whole world, especially in areas where people are not committed to a noble cause, to a genuine cause, to God's love, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. To the Lord we pray, Lord, hear us. 
for those who become sinners because they never have courage, they never have commitment to reconcile with God, get back to God, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. To the Lord we pray, Lord, hear us. For ourselves too, that we may be committed to this love that has come from the Lord, that God may at last tear up in our hearts a vision for our sins. To the Lord we pray, Lord, hear us. From the parish of St. Ignatius, we pray for the sick in these small Christian communities. St. Elizabeth small Christian community, Mrs. Nonde Masiku, Mrs. Teresa Chiluba, Mrs. Linda Nkandu, Mrs. Agnes Perry, Mr. and Mrs. Peter, Imelda Lubambo, Ms. Kaseba Lubambo, Ethel Kusweji, and from the youths, Joani Kwasupeka, Mrs. Mwanza, Kalubam Sakanya, Andrew Masie, Tasha Msakanya, Mwila Mwewangoma. We pray that God may heal them and give them the grace of commitment back to him. Shall we now say the Novena prayer? O most kind and loving saint, in union with you, I adore the divine majesty, the remembrance of the favor with which God blessed you during life and of your glory after death. Fill me with joy and I unite with you in offering to him my humble tribute of thanksgiving and praise. I implore of you to secure for me through your powerful intercession the all important blessing of living and dying in the state of grace. I also beseech you to obtain the favor I ask in this novena. But if what I ask is not for the glory of God, nor for the good of my soul, obtain for me what is most helpful to both. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed you are among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed you are among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed you among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the of our death. Amen. We make our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and not of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and not of human hands. It will become our spiritual thing. Remember your servant in the TV. 
May your mysteries come on. Kindle in us that fire of charity. With which St. Francis said, Bend for the salvation of souls. So that looking ever more worthy in our vocation. Give your blessings to the people, grant them the grace so that they may move as they have journeyed with you for the past nine days. We make our prayers to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today is a special day on the 10th of March. Professor Father Brian Joel Malone was celebrating his birthday. Remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. 